Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me for another installment of this McCamp Family Honors College Fireside Chats. Today, I am super excited to introduce to you Sarah Hawkins. Sarah, uh, I knew her back before each of us joined the Honors College, but what she's doing now is she is the Assistant Director in the Leadership and Service Department at California Polytechnic State University in San Luis Obispo, also referred to as Cal Poly. Sarah is originally from Fresno and holds a bachelor's degree in kinesiology and a master's degree in kinesiology sports psychology, both from Fresno State. Sarah has worked in student affairs since 2006, working with student organizations, club sports, and campus recreation at Ithaca College, San Jose State, Cuesta College, and Cal Poly. She has also taught as a lecturer at Fresno State Ithaca College and San Jose San Jose State and was the first person in the world to teach aquatics for children with challenges, instructor training for college credit. Sarah has been a safety instructor for 20 years and owns her own business providing wilderness safety training. After donating a kidney to a Fresno surgeon, she was named a Fresno State College of Health and Human Services hero in 2021. Sarah holds leadership roles with Kidney Donor Athletes, Inc and the C.L. Smith Elementary PTA, and volunteers her time with the San Luis Obispo County Search and Rescue Team. She has also competed in 20 triathlons and is training for her first Ironman in October 2022. Welcome, Sarah, and thank you so much for joining me today. It's so great to see you, Ashley. (laughs) So let's start and just, you know, I'd love to dive into a little bit of your background. I know we shared that you're from Fresno, but really what led you up to Fresno State? Can you share a little bit with everyone about that? Yeah, I'm a proud Fresno native and then ended up in Clovis for high school, which is where I met you uh, at Buchanan. Um, You were my mentor when I joined the forensics team, and so I have fond memories of that from high school. And um, I knew that I wanted to stay in Fresno for college because I wanted to study Um, to be a physical therapist and Fresno State has an amazing program for that first of all Um, and also I was really connected to some local organizations and I wanted to continue my involvement with them and so that was a big part of why I chose Fresno State Um, but yeah I loved growing up in Fresno and Clovis Um, it was a great place one of those big little towns my my whole family is still there and so I still visit frequently Awesome. So can you share a little bit more about the two organizations that were close to your heart and really kept you in the Valley? Yeah, one of them was Fresno Madera Youth for Christ. Both of my parents had worked there and my mom was still working there at the time and I was working there as well. And then um, the main one was Break the Barriers. I grew up at Break the Barriers and um, was on their performing team for 14 years and had worked my way up to being uh, the directors of one of their departments by the time I left Fresno. And so that place will always have a very special place in my heart. That's awesome. And I would imagine that also led to the teaching you did with the aquatics program for children and has, you know, kind of shaped where you have gone since then. Yeah, absolutely. My experience at Break the Barriers working with students with disabilities and learning about how we all have various abilities has really informed the choices I've made in my career and is something that's still very important with with, for me to advocate for people with disabilities, um, to lift them up and support them and give them a chance to shine. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's chat a little bit about your time at Fresno State. So you knew that you wanted to stay local. Um, what about the program really resonated with you at the time? Um, can you share a little bit about your Fresno State experience? Yeah, Fresno State, um, like I said, I wanted to stay in Fresno, um, and I was I was just really academically driven, um, and you know always a really good student involved with everything, and so um, a lot of friends 
were really pushing me to look outside of Fresno to look at the other UCs or bigger schools. I was getting recruited to Tulane for some reason. I'm not sure how I ended up on their list, um, but knew I definitely didn't want to go to Louisiana for school. And so then when I first heard about the Smith Camp Family Honors College, it seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to be able to still be challenged academically and participate in a world-class program, all while getting to stay close to home, connected to those organizations um, and close to my family as well. I was also only 17 when I started at Fresno State. And so I just really didn't feel ready to leave Fresno um, for, for that reason as well, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, and I, I started when I was 17 as well. Um, and so, yeah, it is kind of a, a big jump, you know, to be making and to have family nearby was definitely I felt like the best of both worlds. Um, I know you didn't live on campus the first year, but I did. And so it was nice to have that that available where I could still go home for a home cooked meal um, and get laundry done and whatnot, but get that college experience as well. Yeah, that would be the only thing I would change if I could go back was I wish I had moved in freshman year. Um, my parents didn't want me to and I, I couldn't without their permission since I was a minor. And um, I do really feel like I missed out on some of those initial bonding experiences, but I did move on campus for my sophomore and junior years. So I got a, a better taste of that. And yeah, I loved being able to go home and do my laundry on the weekends, hang out, watch a chick flick with my mom. It, it was It was a great balance. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So let's talk a little bit more about academics at Fresno State. What was your favorite course? My favorite course had to be um, freshman year on one of the honors courses with Dr. Kathy Adams. It was a communications course and um, I don't remember the exact title, but it had to do with like rhetoric, rhetoric in the marketplace of ideas. And it was really where I learned to um, question the information that I had assumed was true in my life and investigate for myself and learn what the what both sides of the story are or maybe all five so sides of the story um, before I made my own opinion and so it was a very valuable class um, plus Dr. Adams is so much fun she made it really engaging and I just remember having so many special moments in that class yeah that's awesome uh you know, even though we did competitive speaking together, I was still terrified of speaking in public through college. And so that's the only really memory I have with Dr. Adams is walking to our class and thinking, you know, if I break my arm, I wouldn't have to do the speech, but I'd probably have to do it later. So, <laughs> but she was, and I think just a very valuable leader at the time mm -hmm. in our community. Um, so yeah, having, interactions with her is something that I think has left a, a great impression and um, on my life and my viewpoints as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and then let's see, let's talk then about what, how about an experience perhaps for specific to the Honors College um, that you really enjoyed? One that comes to mind was we took a field trip with our honors poli sci class up to Sacramento to visit the Capitol. And um, our professor met us there and we got to meet with some of the, our state representatives. And so it was a very interesting experience educationally. But honestly, I think most of the fun happened in the car ride up there um, with some of my fellow Smith campers. You know, we just stopped at a McDonald's and played in the play structure, even though we were adults. And I just, it's such a fun memory. Another one is, um, our sophomore year, I believe, or my sophomore year was the first year of the retreat. And uh, we played this giant twister game where we had like 16 twister boards all taped together and took over the whole room up at Camp Keola. And that was just one of the most fun experiences, getting to know a bunch of other Smith campers, but um, just being so silly at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting, you know, cause oftentimes, you know, going into the Honors College, it can be very competitive mindsets, right? Of like, okay, we're all coming from the top of our classes and being put together. And so then it's, you know, in the class, it can all, you know, kind of be a very um, critical thinking, you know, trying to figure things out and also demonstrate our abilities and not wanting to look dumb. And then like when you play Twister, obviously all of us are going to end up looking dumb. Right. So, right. <laughs> mm. 
so yeah, I think that that's a great icebreaker and just a way for us to connect. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human and trying to do the best that we can. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. And then we touched on that you would have lived in the dorms uh, your first year. Anything else looking back that you would have done differently while at Fresno State? No, I don't think so. I tried to take full advantage of it and, you know, really engage with the campus community. Um, as we all know, Fresno State isn't the most traditional college. There's a lot of non-traditional students, and I think it's excellent that we have opportunities. But um, I really tried to treat it like a traditional university experience for myself by getting involved with clubs and taking on leadership roles, and that has really served me well in my current career. Um, and then also just spending time studying studying in the dorms, hanging out, walking around campus in the middle of the night with my friends, um, working on campus. I worked in a couple of different offices throughout my time there. Um, my favorite had to have been working in the Smith Camp family or the, the Smith Camp alumni house. Um, I worked there for several years. And so it was just really fun to be on campus and be connected. And so that would be my biggest suggestion to students is to make sure that you are involved and participating in that college life experience as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And as you reflect back, how has the Honors College experience? I mean, I think we've talked about different ways that it shaped it, but is there one thing that stands out to you the most that was like, this was really pivotal for the Honors College in terms of your life trajectory? Hmm. Um, I think the opportunity or the the experience of meeting so many different people from so many different backgrounds has really taught me a lot about um, being equitable for people and how everyone comes to be in the world with a different story. Everyone shows up in the world in a different way because of their background. And it has taught me really a lot about um, how we don't have to treat everybody the same. We shouldn't treat everybody the same. Whereas I think I came into the college thinking that by treating everyone the same, you were giving them the best of yourself and creating the best environment. But now I've learned that that's not what equity is and that we really should take people's background and their experiences into account um, when interacting with them and working with them and collaborating with them. And we're gonna have more success in life, whether it's professionally or personally, if we can do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Fresno State has in recent years gained national recognition for the social mobility that it does provide to individuals. And so I think that that is something that, you know, we're able to see and experience even, you know, 20 so years ago when, when we were students there. Yeah, yeah, you know, one of the biggest things that really has advantaged me in life is leaving college with so little debt um, because of the financial gift that being part of the Smith Camp Family Honors College is. And that really helped, you know, set me on a path for financial success where, where I have friends who maybe went to more prestigious schools for undergraduate degrees um, and really accumulated a lot of debt in the process. And so I'd love students to know that choosing to go to Fresno State, especially if you can do it with, with the Smith Camp Scholarship, is as a good sound investment into your future. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. So let's transition to um, where you are now. I know in your bio, I shared a little bit about how you've gone a few places. Can you share more about, so after you graduated, you got your master's degree at Fresno State mm -hmm. and then um, kind of take us through where you've been since then. Yeah, I know I mentioned a few minutes ago, I came to Fresno State because I knew I wanted to be a physical therapist. Well, that's one of the things when you're a young adult is you should be willing to experiment and um, and change if you find something that's a better fit for you. And I realized pretty early on that that wasn't actually the ideal career goal for me. And so I studied um, every different thing within kinesiology to get the broadest base um, of, of experience to figure out where I was gonna go. and really my career just kind of fell in my lap. Right after grad school, I was engaged to a fellow Smith camper. Um, we've now been married for 16 and a half years and he was he had moved to Ithaca, New York to start his PhD. And um, so I 
started applying to random jobs in Ithaca, New York, and ended up getting a job that was perfect for me. I was the fitness, aquatics, and sport club coordinator at Ithaca College. And I knew nothing about club sports, but I knew everything about aquatics and fitness coming out of Fresno State. And so I knew I could learn the rest. And um, and that's really where my career started. I spent five years working there and just loved it. Um, after that, we moved to Washington, D.C. for a few years. And I actually started working for a private um, agency there and just focusing on aquatics for a little while. Um, we, we moved to San Jose State after that. And uh, I was working there for the university as the director of their nonprofit therapy pool. So that was really where I got to tie in a lot of my Break the Barriers experience. And then um, same when we moved here to San Luis Obispo, I was still just focusing on aquatics for a few years when the opportunity to come back to club sports at Cal Poly came out. And so I did that for three years. And then just recently, um, I was promoted to the assistant director within that department. And so now I'm still overseeing club sports, but I'm also overseeing all of our 400 clubs on campus. Um, and that's where I am today. <laughs> right. Well, congratulations on the promotion. Thank that you. That sounds like, and you know, that's where college students have such great energy, right? Because they're figuring out where they want to go in their lives. Um, so I would imagine that that's a, a fun role to be in. Yeah. And I see it too in my husband, because we have gone through all, through all the SMIC camp together. Um, I actually have a video tape, a VHS tape of him from that comms class with Dr. Adams where he was giving a speech about becoming a communications engineer. He wanted to work for a cell phone company and like work on cell phone transmission towers and things. And um, that's that's not at all what he does now. He's a biomedical engineering professor. And so, you know, we just all need to be willing to see where life takes us and go with the flow. Um, I'm not saying abandon your dreams if that's what you wanna do. I'm just saying be willing to adjust when your dreams change and you wanna pursue something a little different. <laughs> Well, and I think part of it, too, is taking the pressure off, right? Because going into college, you need to declare a major. And I know for me, there was a lot of angst surrounding that because I felt like that was going to dictate where my life would take me. And so I needed to make the right decision. And, you know, since then, I've just noticed that if I just keep saying yes to the things that excite and inspire me, then, you know, I'm getting to where I need to be and where is right for me. So... Um, just kind of, yeah, I think knowing that, you know, if we make the wrong decision as 18 year olds, we're not going to have, you know, we're not destined to a life of being miserable. That's no, not <laughs> at all. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. And it's either a hell yeah, or it's a no. <laughs> so, and that's how, yeah, kind of the gut check going on there. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's, um, now you're in academia and that was pretty hard hit by the pandemic so I mean meaning that it you know went to virtual um, can you share a little bit about how that impacted you and your role and and maybe even share a little bit about you know what behaviors you changed as you reflect back on who you are today versus you know who you were just two and a half years ago yeah yeah yeah, you're right that the pandemic hit everyone hard. Um, it was especially difficult for us to take 24,000 students and send them home over one week and um, make the adjustments that come along with that as a campus as a whole. The biggest struggle for me at the time, I was focusing just on our club sports programs. And so I now had 1,500 athletes who weren't allowed to see each other or practice together um, or maintain that community that was so important to them because I think that's actually one of the most important reasons that students benefit from sport is actually the community itself. Um, of course, the physical activity and healthy habits are part of it, but community was so important. And we struggled because, you know, on top of the pandemic, we actually had two students die during that time, not from COVID, but from other reasons and we weren't able to come together as a community to support each other and grieve during that time so um, I learned a lot I learned how to hold a funeral over zoom I learned how to create all kinds of social media challenges and TikTok challenges and things to keep my students entertained and active and just engaged in some way um, I learned a lot about myself I 
Um, I have ADHD and so I didn't know how working from home would go, but I found that actually I was able to be really um, stable and committed to working during work hours only during that time, which is something I'm not actually very good at <laughs> when we work in person. Um, one of the things that I think that has benefited our culture and society, at least at Cal Poly, is that all of our supervisors saw us successfully working from home, and that has created a little more flexibility with alternate work schedules um, or, you know, I know you've got a couple of kids, Ashley. Being a working mom is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life and balancing the needs of both. And now I feel really comfortable instead of having to take a sick day when my kid is sick, I can ask for permission to work from home that day. And I think there is now a cultural shift in understanding that that's okay and I'm still gonna get the job done. So if we can look at a bright side of what has come out of the pandemic, that might be one of them. Um, but yeah, really just learned a lot that I can dig deep and support my students even when I'm, I'm struggling myself. Um, healthy habits I created were making sure I got my exercise. I heard someone say, you were either going to come out of the pandemic a, um, a drunk, a hunk, a chunk, or something. I think there was one more. And so I made it my goal to come out as a hunk and not get that quarantine 15 and take advantage of a more flexible work arrangement to, you know, go for a run on my lunch break and, and then just hop on zoom all sweaty because no one could see me or smell me. And so, so I've tried to keep those habits going and making sure to make time for exercise in my work day as well. Yeah. And I think that's right. We each get, um, things come into our lives that can be beneficial or detrimental. So to have that, being intentional about what we want to get out of the experience and yeah. then and then to your point for me it's also okay this has been a huge disruption but what do I want to retain right because we're not going to go back to the original normal so yeah. what does this new normal look like and um, yeah there's a lot of adaptations and I talk to my colleagues and clients all the time about you know we're reimagining how we work so what do we want this to look like because we have tools. It's Yeah, we have tools. And now that everyone is fluent in Zoom and Teams and, and virtual workspaces, um, I think it's added more equity to the services that I can offer to students. Because now, instead of just in-person appointments, they can choose between in-person or Zoom. And they might choose the, a virtual appointment for several reasons. It might be because they're limiting their exposure. It might be because they don't have a parking permit and they don't wanna to pay to come on campus just to drop in and see me for 15 minutes. It might be because they have a kid running around in the background because they're a, a you know student parent. And so we've all decided as a, as an organization, you know, as Cal Poly, that we're going to continue to offer those expanded services um, now that we can and we know how to do it because it adds a lot of opportunity for students that are in, that are in different situations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so you know, with that, there's lots of opportunity, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So let's we. You mentioned that I have a couple kids and you have your daughter. So let's talk a little bit about you know life um, that you currently have. So you live in the Central Coast mm -hmm. and how old is Mackenzie now? Mackenzie is nine. She just started fourth grade yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and then what's, you know, fun activities that you and your family keep busy doing? Yeah. So we love bikes. We've always been um, cyclists. We've loved riding bikes, both my husband and I, our whole lives. Um, it was something we even did in college too. And so we spent a lot of time riding our bikes around the area. There's a, a playground at Avila Beach that's eight miles from our house. So we like to ride down there. And the benefit for our daughter is that she gets to play on the playground because <laughs> she's not loving the bike riding quite as much yet as, as we do. Um, we've done some big cycling tours. Uh, we rode 350 miles from Pittsburgh to DC one summer to visit some other SMIC campers actually, the um, Dylan Betancourt. And, um, and so, and Mackenzie was five at the time and she pedaled the whole way. So we love our bicycle adventures. Um, ben and I just actually went to Tanzania in March to climb Mount Kilimanjaro with 21 other kidney donors. And so that was a big adventure. We, we just love adventure. Our family motto is peace, love, and adventure. Um, 
And so we're just looking forward to seeing what the next adventure is going to be. Yeah. So you mentioned other kidney donors. Can you talk a little bit about yourself being a kidney donor and what prompted you to do that? Yeah, it was it was a just say yes situation. I was laying in bed on a Sunday morning, scrolling through Facebook, and a post just grabbed my attention. It was from um, one of our elementary school classmates, and he said that his dad had been on dialysis for six years, and that wasn't going to be sustainable for too much longer. And so they were looking for people that might have connections to a kidney donor um, or kidney transplant center to see if they could get his dad moved up the waiting list because he had been waiting for a kidney for so long. And so I rolled over and showed my phone to Ben and I said, can I do this? And he goes, do you know people at kidney transplant centers? I said, no, but can I just give him my kidney? And, and Ben was like, I think it's more complicated than that. Um, but you know, if you want to get tested, I'd be in support of that. So I called, I called my friend that day and we hadn't spoken really in person since sixth grade, but um, I gave him a call and said, I'd be willing to get tested. And it's a long process. It's not like going to give blood where um, you can just do it that day. It was, it took 10 months of screening tests and appointments and compatibility tests before it all worked out. Um, but eventually the transplant took place on February 6th, 2019 in um, at UCLA. So just about three and a half years ago and um, my recipient's doing great. He is currently um, a stroke warrior. He's recovering from a, a pretty severe stroke that happened last year, but he is fighting his way to getting back to, to as much of a normal life as possible. Yeah, no, that's great and inspiring. And I know that, you know, it, can you, I mean, can you share a little bit about other things you've done, right? Because I mean, for someone who maybe isn't as active in giving and volunteering of their time, like to hear that, I think it would be like, wow, right? Like that's a big leap. But I know that, you know, it's the little steps that have happened in the period in advance that made it not such a big, scary thing for you. So can you share just a little bit about other ways you've been active and how that's grown over the years. Yeah, it really started for me um, as a kid. My parents were both regular blood donors, and that just set a good example for me that I knew when I grew up and I was old enough, I was going to start becoming a blood donor, even if it was just for the free ice cream when I was a little kid. Um, it, it metamorphosized um, into something more serious when one of my best friends, Lance Fritz, a fellow Buchanan bear, um, passed away when I was 16. And he was just a really clo close friend of mine. He had leukemia. And we actually um, started a Buchanan High School blood drive in his honor um, for, that ran for many years. And so that was a big part of my motivation was, you know, I'm going to be a blood donor. I'm going to get on the bone marrow registry. I did that when I was a Fresno State student. Um, and, you know, someday when I pass away, I'm going to be an, become an organ donor. Um, and it was about a year before I donated my kidney that I learned that you could be a living organ donor when a friend of mine gave half of his liver to a former coworker of mine. And so that kind of started the thinking in the back of my mind that that was possible. Um, but then really when I saw that Facebook post, it all clicked. It was like, this is, this is what I've been waiting for. This is the moment why um, this has taken this has taken me, you know, life has brought me here. Um, what, what I didn't expect was I thought that the day we had the transplant surgery was the end of the story. I thought, okay, I've done my part and he's going to have a great life now. And yes, I've gained a new family through him, but um, that was really like the end of the process. I did not realize how much I would get in return by um, connecting to a whole network of other kidney donors. I didn't know there were so many of us out there and getting to be on the ground floor when we started um, the board of directors for kidney donor athletes. And I was one of the original board members for that and getting us our strategic plan started and coming up with the idea to take us 22 kidney donors to the top of Africa to show the world that you can totally donate a kidney and go back to leading a very healthy, active life. It does not have to affect who you are for the rest of your life. And I think there's a misconception of that out there. Um, and so we, we were really successful. 20 of the 22 of us made it to the top. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And um, I'm so glad we did it. And they actually made a documentary film about it that's going to be um, airing at film festivals around the country next year. Well, that's awesome. So, 
did you find that being a kidney donor, because you've you know competed in a lot of marathons, have you found there is an impact to your time and your performance ability, or or even like you compare yourself now to three years ago, and are you, you know, do you feel nor the same? We joke in the in the kidney donor community about how all of us just do the surgery for the weight loss, but really it's negligible. Your kidney is the size of your fist. It weighs about one pound. So none of us are having this uh, complex, difficult surgery just to, just to save a pound. Um, I joke that somehow not having my left kidney makes me more aerodynamic in the pool because I don't know what it is, but I swim faster now. Um, but no, there's been no, no impact. I, I've never been a super talented athlete. I just enjoy the challenge um, so I don't really care too much about my times but I, I just continue to get stronger every year and even the in the years since my donation I did my first half Ironman seven months after the transplant so if I can do that any anyone can do anything <laughs> well and to your point doing those competitions are just as much mental as the physical aspect so um, yeah. Absolutely. And my that was where my master's degree from kinesiology at Fresno State really comes into play because I, I specialized in sports psychology and um, didn't realize that I was just taking that for myself. I was learning how to sports psychologize myself and that has really come in handy. I've learned a lot through academically and scientifically about resilience and performance training and um, I use those techniques on myself all the time. <laughs> And your students too at Cal Poly mm -hmm. and leading them. So. Yeah, those those same skills, coaching someone for performance um, mentally doesn't just apply to sport. A lot of sports psychologists work with surgeons or um, battle battle pilots. That's not the word. Fighter pilots. There's the word I'm looking for. Um, uh, professional like musicians and actors so it's really more of the field of performance psychology is how we should look at it and I work with students I try to develop leadership and team dynamics with them so I'm able to put all those skills to, uh, to use there as well yeah I will say I've noticed at the firm where I work now uh, there's a lot of sports you know kind of references that are made and, you know, one person told me that I should aspire to be the John Wooden of, you know, my office. And I, I'm not a big sports fan. So I had to like, look up like, okay, who is this? And, you know, but there is just a lot of crossover in terms of, um, yeah, how to leadership ultimately, yeah. right? Especially so. if you're supervising people, like you're basically the coach of your team and how do you coach them to success? How do you work with the group dynamics and everyone's different personalities and backgrounds? Um, there's so much to be learned from coaching for that. Yeah, and I think there's also the, um, you know, because oftentimes in work we ignore the mind, well, maybe the mind in terms of what you're executing, but the body spirit, but that's all really critical in terms of showing up and performing your day-to-day -day job duties on a yeah, regular basis. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Are you still active with the Honors College now? I'm going to yeah. transition. Yeah, yeah. I try to go to the reunions as, as often as I can. And, um, you know, we've we've definitely enjoyed looking forward to the, the day of giving every year um, and, and donating to the financial causes specific to the Honors College because that's really the part of our experience that Ben and I um, connect to most uh, looking back at Fresno State and our experience was everything that happened with the Honors College and so we want to make sure that this is a program that can continue for years and years and years um, and and yeah I just I love seeing the changes that have happened over the years to the program different staff different leadership different classes and professors and one of my favorite memories was going to um, an engineering competition in San Jose and there was a team there it was the human powered vehicle competition and there was a team there from fresno state and i couldn't help but notice that in a group of engineering students they were all female and so i went over to them and i asked by any chance are any of you smith camp students and all of them were and i thought that's the difference we're making is you know smith camp helps bring females into engineering and gives them a place there and there's and and when i told them that i was in the second ever smith camp class they were just like, whoa, you're old. <laughs> but, but it was just such a great way to connect and show them like, 
look, you know, we're out in the world, we're successful now, we work in academia, you can do this too, we're, we're supporting you. And so just, it, I think anyone that comes out of this program, if anyone emailed me ever and said, I'm, I'm an, a current Smith Camp student, could I do an internship with you? Or could you write a letter for me? I would do it, even if I'd never met them, because I know who is coming out of the Smith Camp program. <laughs> So you mentioned the word success there. Do you define success differently now than you did when you were in college? You know, I don't know if I ever had a sense of, of success in college. I knew I wanted to work in academia at a certain point once I figured out my my career goals. So I, I could at least check that box. I was successful at that. What What is success? Is it money? Is it career status? I have never had a strong um, drive there. Where I have learned to find success is in helping others, um, whether it's through volunteering my time with the search and rescue, whether it's I'm still a regular blood donor, um, whether it's contributing financially to different organizations or causes that I believe in, because I really believe that if you save one life, you save the world. That's a Abrahamic proverb that someone shared with me after I donated my kidney and has really stuck with me. Um, because if we look at the world today, there's so much hurt and pain out there. Um, and it seems daunting to see, to try and fix all of it. How do we fix the environment? How do we fix politics? How do we fix war, feast, famine? It's a lot, but if we take it one step at a time and just try to reach out and help one person, we're saving the world. And so um, that to me is, I think, what my definition of success is now. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing. We're going to transition now to some rapid fire questions. Okay. Does that work for you? Sounds good. All right. The lightning round. Your... <laughs> yes. Well, and maybe we already touched on some of these. Um, but you can answer them really fast. Favorite course? Oh yeah, comp in college. H. Yeah, comp okay. six H. And favorite professor? Um, Adams in the honors college. Dr. Wade Gilbert in kinesiology for non honors classes. Got it. And favorite place to eat? And what did you order? Oh my gosh! In grad school, I would have died if it weren't for the subway. I had those two for one coupons, so I would get them to make me a foot long, cut it in half, charge me for a two for one, and that was lunch and dinner. <laughs> And what kind of sandwich? Oh, veggie delight. Always veggie delight. Mm -hmm. Got it. Anything you would have done differently? Moved on campus in my freshman year. Got it. And now present day, what is something that your classmates would be surprised to hear you're doing now? Oh, that I'm a liberal because I was definitely a conservative in college. And that was just a thing of growth that I needed to go through for me. <laughs> and what's the most exciting thing in your life right now? Our film about the Kilimanjaro climb just got accepted to the first film festival. Hopefully it'll get accepted to a few more. And then it's gonna be on Amazon Prime after it tours those festivals. So you'll all be able to see it. Oh, that is exciting. All right, and what are you completely bored of? Oh, I'm so bored of um, the discord happening in politics right now. I think if we all just stopped and listened to each other, we would see that all of us want the best for people and we really have the same goals in mind maybe how we get there is differently but I think we all need to learn how to listen to each other and what book are you reading right now I am currently reading like four but the the main one on my nightstand um, is let my people go surfing by Yvonne Chouinard he was the founder of Patagonia and I really like his unconventional approach to business and um, his his stewardship of the environment and then is there a book that you have reread multiple times or gifted to others? Oh yeah, Dear Sugar by Cheryl Strayed. It's like my go-to Bible reference for life. And so I give it to young women a lot when they maybe get engaged or graduate from college. Um, it makes a great gift. <laughs> I'll have to check that one out. And one piece of advice you'd give to college students. My advice is don't give advice. My, <laughs> I, um, I always say I'm an open book, so I'll answer any questions for you based on my experience, but people give so much advice that's unsolicited. And so um, I want it to be more authentic. And so I just say, just ask me questions. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard too, when I was a new parent that when people <laughs> give unsolicited advice, it's because they're like, you know, basically just projecting what it is that they want. Because yeah, exactly. As a new parent, we get plenty of unsolicited advice. That's where this <laughs> uh, that's where this policy came from. <laughs> yeah. 
So awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. I do appreciate your time today. Um, and you know, just we'll leave in the comments ways that people can get in touch with you. Um, but thank you for sharing about your story, your experiences and helping people to catch up or otherwise learn about a different avenue and results of the Honors College. So, yeah, thank yeah. Thanks, Ashley, for hosting these. They've been so fun to watch and I'm, I'm honored to be part of it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Sarah.